Listen to the sound of that paper hitting the bottom of the box. To some, it's the sound of sham democracy. To others, it's hope. I expect changes. I wish, so to speak, to see new faces in leadership positions and something better for our country. My feelings are, I want continuation of the policy as it is now in our country. That's why I voted for our incumbent president. I am happy with everything and want everything to continue as it is now. This man notes the time, 12.25. Noon against Putin makes literal the notion of a protest vote. And amidst the political fatalism, many still just want to do the right thing. Well, you also know that the election is not real. We came to put a tick where we want, so that at least we can sleep peacefully. I voted for the current president, and I'm sure that our country will only move forward towards success. It's a dead cert. Putin will win his fifth term. His approval rating is currently 86%, according to a well-known Russian polling company, though polls are tricky to do in Russia. He's seemingly popular. And opposition? Well, what opposition? Take Alexei Navalny's death last month. Today, Yulia Navalnaya did what her husband would have. She showed up, her face alone, now a symbol of resistance. What's your message? We're, we're 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 Just be uh, brave. One, one day, very soon, we will win. This is Berlin, Tokyo, Beijing, New Delhi. Across the world, Russian nationals have been casting their votes. Check out these queues in London. We've been in this queue for more than three hours now, and we're not going anywhere. I'm against Putin, against the war, for freedom, peace, and um, fair voting. There's been a surge of Ukrainian drone strikes over the three-day vote. Russia's Ministry of Defense claims Ukraine launched a total of 36 drones overnight. And speaking of airstrikes, it's been revealed that Grant Shapps, Britain's defense minister, scrapped a trip to Odessa last week after a meeting with Zelensky in Kyiv. UK intelligence reportedly warned that Russia had become aware of his travel plans. So where's Putin? This was Friday, filmed by his people from his enclave. The tall and short of his visibility during the election process, hubris perhaps, and why contribute to something you don't believe in. Well, earlier I spoke to Nina Khrushcheva, professor of international affairs in New York and granddaughter of former Soviet leader Nikita Khrushchev. I asked her what she thinks is the significance of this election for Russian democracy. Well, Russian democracy is, is a big word. There is no such thing, uh, obviously, because these elections uh, that we are discussing is not really elections. It's some sort of KGB-driven, opaque procedure uh, that is supposed to show the full total support of, of Putin and the process of whatever Russia is going to uh, towards that is, in Putin's word, it's a unique civilization uh, run by um by him and his people uh but it does show something it has been showing on for two years since the war in ukraine began in february 2022 is that there is a lot of protest brewing under the surface because if you've seen there's already about 70 plus people being arrested all around russia and these are the people we only know do you think that the dissenting voices that we're seeing in protests around the world and some in Russia could turn into something that could challenge Putin's power? I think they are already challenging Putin's power because there are people in the street. And I'm much more concerned not even about people around the world, but much more concerned about people in Russia, because in Russia, they are the ones that are challenging. They are the ones that are facing difficulty. They are the ones that are facing arrests and potential prosecution. Um, so far, it's a good sign whether it's going to turn into something akin to a revolution I don't know. We can't predict this. But I would expect that uh, in Russia, very rarely uh, power changes uh, from the streets. I would expect if the power is to change, it is the Putin elites that are going to be exhausted and tired of this kind of leadership. And he needs this mandate for the war in Ukraine. What will 
his win mean for them over the next couple of years? He needs that mandate for everything, a war in Ukraine, uh, declaring victory uh, if he decides to, declaring, expanding the war if he needs to, uh, turning Russia uh, into the full military production, uh, curtailing more freedoms, and I say freedoms advisingly because there's none, and still the people still showing up in the street and protest, so there's still some tiny remaining freedom. So he needs legitimacy essentially for everything that he plans to do, which I imagine more war, more restrictions, uh, more oppression for Russia and probably worsening relationship with, uh, with the rest of the world. And just finally, how many terms do you think Putin has got left? This is going to be six years. Do you think there'll be six more years after that and forever and forever? Um, well, the only thing I can tell you is that on uh, March 5th, 1953, Joseph Stalin, who thought, uh, who everybody thought would never die because he was God of the Soviet Union, and yet he died. He was a human being. So that can happen to everybody. And that man died, and this one will die too.